The movie opens when Will Hunt, a 20-year-old young boy, is reading a book in his apartment. He has to leave his apartment when his friend Chuck comes to pick him up so he can drop him off at work. At the same time, Professor Gerald is giving a lecture to his class at Harvard University. Gerald talks to them about solving complicated math problems. Before he dismisses them, he informs everyone that he wrote an advanced Fourier system on the chalkboard in the corridor and is hoping that one of them will solve it before the end of the semester. He tells his students that if they solve the problem, they will get fame and fortune by having their accomplishments recorded and their names printed in MIT Tech Magazine. When the class ends and students go into the corridor, we see Will there cleaning the place as he works part-time as a janitor there. Aside from his construction job, Will looks at the math problem written on the chalkboard but ignores it and carries on with his usual work. After work, he goes out for drinks with his friends but leaves early from there. He goes back to his apartment where he writes some math problems on his mirror. The next day, he goes to work early in the morning when the corridors of the university are still empty. He goes to the chalkboard and solves the problem written on the board by Gerald. After solving the problem, Will carries on with his usual life, spending most of the time hanging out with his friends. Meanwhile, at Harvard, Gerald is approached by some students on the day of the MIT alumni reunion for the class of 1972. The students ask to get enrolled in his class. Gerald is surprised by the request and says that they should talk about it later because it is Sunday. The students replied to him that they couldn't wait to find out who proved the theorem. Gerald is surprised to hear this and rushes inside the building only to find that the problem he had written on the board had been solved. He tries to ask everyone for the person who solved it, but no one claims that they did it. At the same time, Will is at a baseball game with his friend and notices his childhood bully sitting a few steps away from them with a girl. Not wanting to get into a fight, Will ignores his bully at the game. Later, when he's going back with his friends after the game, they notice the same boy bullying some girls on the road. This time, Will doesn't ignore it as he tells his friend to stop the car, and they all rush to fight with the group. Will, with his friends, Chuck, Morgan, and Billy, beat up the boys from the other group. Soon they start to hear the police sirens, and his friends hardly pull back Will, who is punching his bully repeatedly. Even though they stopped fighting, they still couldn't escape, and the police arrested Will. The next day, at Harvard University, Gerald's class has grown exceptionally, which surprises him. Gerald knows that they all came here to find the name of the mystery math magician, so without wasting any time, he asked the person who proved the theorem to come forward. They all wait eagerly, but no one from the class steps up. After some moments, Gerald says that there will be no unmasking today. He tells the class that he wrote another problem on the board that took university university professors more than two years to prove, and he wants them to solve them. Luckily, Will is out of this station the same day on parole and goes back to the university for work. He sees another problem written on the board and starts solving it. Just then, Gerald comes there but thinks that Will is vandalizing and chases him away. When he looks at the board after chasing Will away, he's shocked to find that the problem has been solved. After leaving Harvard, Will goes to a bar with his friends. At the bar, his friend Chuck tries to hit on a girl when a boy named Clark comes there and tries to demean him by proving that he has no education. Wanting to save his friend, Will steps in to handle the situation and surprises everyone when he states the most complicated facts about history and saves his friend from embarrassment. Will and his friend don't stay there any longer and go back to their table. They are approached by a girl named Skylar who was witnessing when Will rescued his friend. She says that she has been waiting for Will for the last 45 minutes but he hasn't approached her, so she decided to approach him because she has to go back home. Skylar then gives Will her number, saying she wants to meet him for coffee, and when Will agrees to meet with her later, she leaves from there. The following day, Gerald goes to the company where Will works to find out more about him. Will's boss is reluctant to give the information to him at first, but when Gerald introduces himself and explains the situation, they give him a card with Will's information on it. There, Gerald also finds out that Will is going through a court trial he attends the court hearing and sees Will defend himself. When the judge is going over Will's criminal record, Gerald finds out that Will has been through several foster homes and has been the victim of continuous physical abuse. The judge first goes through the assault cases against Will and then announces to put him in jail, saying that other judges might care, but he can't do that because Will assaulted a police officer during the fight. After the ruling, Will goes to jail, but he doesn't have to stay there long. Soon, Gerald visits him and in 
informs him that he has bailed him out. Gerald is not phased by Will's rude behavior and informs him that the judge agrees to release Will under his supervision on two conditions. When Will asks about the conditions, Gerald says that the first one is that Will will meet him every week so that they can go over advanced math problems together. Gerald continues saying that the second condition is that he will have to see a therapist and he is responsible for submitting reports on his condition. Will laughs after hearing this and says that he will do the math, but he is not going to meet any therapist. Gerald says that it is better to see a therapist than to spend time in jail. He has to change his decision. After Will is released, Gerald takes him to Harvard, where they work together on solving the new math problems. The next day, Will goes to the therapist Henry for his first session. Before his session with Henry, he had read his book last night, and using the information, he mocked Henry. When the session ends, Henry comes out of the office angry and says to Gerald that he can't do this anymore because it's not worth it. Gerald doesn't lose hope, and this time, he takes Will to another therapist named Rich, who hypnotizes him. Gerald is present in the session and sees Will pretending to be hypnotized and joking with the doctor. Gerald is furious with Will this time, and when Will says that he doesn't need therapy, he kicks him out of there. Gerald's colleague Tom, who was also at the session, asks him what he will do now, and Gerald says that he has someone in mind who can handle this. The person Gerald is talking about is his college roommate, Sean, who currently teaches psychology at Bunker Hill Community College. Thinking that Sean is best to work on Will's case, Gerald goes to meet Sean at his college and tells him that he has something interesting for him. Sean ends the class he is teaching and takes Gerald to the library. Before talking about Will, Gerald reminisces some memories of their college time and then moves toward the topic of Will. Gerald first talks to Sean about an Indian man named Ramanawan, who was a genius mathematician. He says that even though Ramanawan had limited resources, his work was recognized by Harvard when he sent them an article. And after that, they invited him to the USA, where he worked with the university for years. Gerald says that Will is just like Ramanawan, but the problem is that he is very defensive, so he needs someone who can break through that. Gerald says that Sean is the best person for this task, and when Sean asks him why that is, he replies that it is because Sean and he have the same kind of background. Seeing Gerald's determination to help Will, Sean agrees to his request to see him. Before the first session, Gerald warns Sean about Will, saying that he might have done some research on him that he will use to provoke him. Soon, Will arrives there, and Sean tells Gerald to leave the room before the session starts. When the session starts, Sean stays calm instead of responding to Will's rude behavior and answers politely when Will talks about all of the books at his place. They discuss their favorite writers and books, Sean successfully ignoring any rude comments Will passes to him. Just then, Will notices a painting on the table and immediately goes to see it up close. After finding out that Sean made this painting, Will instantly comments on how the painting is not very good and the color scheme is also mismatched. Sean is unfazed by his comments at first, but when Will says that the painting depicts a kind of despair and sadness, which means that Sean married the wrong woman, he gets furious. Seeing his reaction, Will continues to provoke him about his wife, and Sean finally loses control and pushes Will against the wall, saying if he ever disrespects his dead wife again, he will kill him. Soon, the session ends, and Sean comes out to the waiting area where Gerald is sitting. When Gerald sees Sean's expression, he says that it's okay if he doesn't want to continue the sessions. Gerald is surprised when Sean tells him to make sure that Will is here on time for his next session. That night, Will goes to meet Skylar, and they spend a lot of time together, exploring a costume store and eating together. There, Will finds out that Skylar is planning to move to Stanford for medical school after she graduates from Harvard. While talking about their future, they also share their first kiss. On Thursday, when Will goes for his next session, he's surprised to see that Sean has shown up. Sean doesn't give him time to sit and instead takes him to the park, where he sits in front of a lake. Will tries to make fun of him at first, but when Sean starts talking, Will silently listens to him. Sean says that he was overthinking what Will said to him, but he soon realizes that Will is just a kid who doesn't know what he is talking about. Sean talks about how Will doesn't experience anything in the real world and tries to look wise by talking about things he reads in books. He continues saying that Will can tell him what Shakespeare says about war, but he doesn't know how it feels when you see your best friend losing his life in front of you. Sean also talks about how Will can tell him quotes about
about love, but he never looks at a woman and feels like she is an angel sent to earth only for him. Sean finishes by starting to talk about his wife who died of cancer. He says Will doesn't know what it feels like to spend two months in the hospital with someone you love more than yourself. During all this time, Will silently listens to him as Sean says that when he looks at Will instead of an intelligent man, he just sees a kid who is scared of the world. He says that no one can fully understand Will, but he pretended to know everything about Sean by only looking at a picture he painted. He says that he can't know anything about Will unless he talks about himself and then leaves, saying it's Will's choice on what he wants to do. The next few days, Will spends most of his time with his friends and tries to call Skylar once, but hangs up without saying anything. When he goes for his next session, Sean is completely silent. Will also doesn't say anything, and the session ends with no words exchanged between them. Gerald is confused when he finds out about this session through Sean. When he asks why Will did that, Sean replies that he's trying to prove that he doesn't need to talk to him, but it's just a waiting game now because he can't talk first either. A few days before his next session, Will helps Gerald find solutions to some other complicated problems. When he goes for his next session, they both stay silent at first, but slowly, Will starts talking. He starts telling Sean a joke which breaks the ice between them. Will slowly starts talking about his life as he tells Sean about how he went on a date last week but didn't call back the girl yet. Sean tries to encourage him to call the girl, but Will expresses his concern, saying that Skylar is perfect and he doesn't want to ruin that. Seeing his confusion, Sean tells him little stories about his deceased wife. He says that he remembers the little things about her and that's what made her his wife. Sean says that Skylar and Will are both not perfect, but it is possible that when they get together, their relationship would be perfect and the only way he can find out is by giving it a shot. Will finally gets the courage to approach Skylar again and when his session ends, he goes to her room to meet her. He apologizes to her at first for not contacting her and then helps her solve a complicated academic problem so they can go out together early. Skylar finally agrees to go out with him and they go out to eat together where Skylar asks him about his family. Will lies about how he comes from a big family of 12 brothers and even tells her their names when she asks about it. When Skylar says she wants to meet Will's family, he is reluctant to accept her request. After a few days, when Will goes for another session, he informs Sean that he has read his book and asks him if he still counsels veterans. Sean replies he left that job when his wife got sick. Will asks him if he ever thought about what his life would be like if he never met his wife. Sean replies to him that he never thought about it because everyone has bad times in their lives. That is what makes the other things good that we don't pay attention to otherwise. Will is still curious about Sean's life as he asks him if he regrets meeting his wife. Sean replies he doesn't regret a single day he spent with her. Sean shares a story on how he met his wife on the day of the historic Game 6 of the 1975 World Series. Sean tells him that he had tickets to this game, but he had to give them up so he could talk to the girl who later became his wife. Will couldn't get over his shock that Sean didn't watch the legendary game and asked him how his friends could let him do that. Sean replies that his friends saw the sincerity in his eyes and he didn't want to regret later that he didn't talk to the girl he fell in love with at first sight. He says that he doesn't regret the 20 years he spent with his wife. Will is very impressed by Sean's story and when he meets Skylar the next time, he lets her meet his friends, even though he was reluctant to do this at first. They spend a very pleasant time with his friends, sharing silly stories and when they are about to leave, Skylar says she wants to see his house, but Will refuses, saying they would do it some other time. Meanwhile, Gerald goes to meet Sean and asks him if he talked to Will about his future. Sean replies that they are still working on his past. Gerald says that they should talk about his future because his phone has been ringing continuously for job offers for Will. Sean argues that he doesn't think Will is ready for that, but Gerald refuses to listen to him, instead saying that Will has a great mind and they need to use it. Sean still argues that they need to keep in mind what Will wants, but Gerald is adamant that Will needs a job. He argues with Sean and when they can't come to a decision, Gerald says that he was just trying to keep Sean in the loop, otherwise Will is already at the interview that he set up for him. Gerald is oblivious to the fact that instead of going to the interview by himself, Will has sent Chuck as his chief negotiator.
negotiator. Chuck ruins the interview for him by asking the interviewer for cash. When the interviewer gives him some money, he threatens to sue them for offering him a bribe and then leaves from there. In the meantime, Will is on a date with Skylar, who expresses her astonishment at how Will can understand complicated math problems and asks if he has a photographic memory. Will tries to explain to her how it is normal for him, just like she plays the piano so easily while he can't do that. They stay there for a while, talking about Will's abilities, and then go back to Skylar's dorm. In the dorm, she asks Will to move to California with her, but Will refuses, saying that he doesn't want her to regret the decision when they move together, and she finds that he is not what she expected him to be. Skylar tries to convince him, but Will continues to refuse, which leads them to have a heated argument. When Skylar confronts him about lying to her about his family, Will gets furious and accidentally reveals his past. He tells her that he doesn't want her to know that he is an orphan who went through physical abuse in his life. Listening to his devastating story, Skylar tries to say that she wants to help him, but Will refuses to listen and leaves, saying he doesn't love her. Will then goes to meet Gerald in his office, where they talk about the math problems they were working on. When Gerald tries to talk to him about job opportunities, Will starts arguing with him, saying he doesn't want to spend his life sitting in an office and explaining to people about his work. He then leaves the office abruptly, half burning the paper he was working on. After that, Will goes for another interview Gerald has set up for him, but messes it up again when he starts to talk about how his one step can lead to so many disasters in the world. He later goes to meet Sean and talks about his situation. Sean says to him that he doesn't have a soulmate, a person who challenges him, and he will never have one because he is scared to take the first step. Sean also tries to talk to him about taking the job, saying how the work he is doing is not easy and there might be a reason he chooses to be a janitor at a top education institute. Will doesn't take his advice seriously and instead makes fun of it by saying that he wants to be a shepherd, which leads Sean to kick him out of his office. After leaving Sean's office, Will calls Skylar for the last time, but doesn't tell her that he loves her. Skylar cuts the call disappointedly, and after some time, flies to California. A week after Skylar left, Will goes to the construction site he works at with Chuck. After they finish their shift, they sit together, and Chuck says to him that he wants to see Will working at a better job because he has the opportunities they will never have. He says that he doesn't want Will struggling with them and working the same job 50 years from now. Meanwhile, Gerald goes to Sean's office to talk about Will, and they get into a heated argument over whether they should push Will to work, even if he doesn't want to. Will walks in on them having an argument, but Gerald leaves without saying anything. Sean shows Will the file he is about to send the judge about Will's progress. During the session, Sean shared with Will that he also faced physical abuse from his father. Seeing that someone has the same experience experiences him, Will hesitantly tells Sean about the abuse he faced at the hands of his foster father. After hearing his story, Sean encourages him to fight with his inner demons and forces him to believe that it was not his fault. When Sean repeatedly says that it is not his fault, Will finally breaks out in his arms, letting out the years of despair. In the coming days, Will will accept the job offer he got through Gerald. He goes to inform Sean about that, who congratulates him at first and informs Will that he is leaving to tour some other country. They bid their final goodbye as Sean gives Will his number so they can stay in touch. After that, Will goes out with his friends on his 21st birthday and they give him a car as a present so he can easily go to his new job at Cambridge. In the meantime, Sean meets with Gerald and they reconcile as Sean promises to attend the next reunion of their class. The next day, Chuck goes to pick up Will from his house and is extremely happy to find that Will is not there. Before leaving the city, Will goes to Sean's apartment building and leaves a note for him. In the note, he asks Sean to tell Gerald that he has to go see about a girl. Will has passed on the job offer and instead is heading to California to reunite with Skylar. The movie ends there. What do you think? Is it okay to move on with your life without dealing with the demons of your past? Do you believe that people should follow their passion instead of what they are good at. Please let us know your opinion in the comments and make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon so you won't miss more exciting movie recaps.